Hello, <clears throat> Judy. My throat is a little bit scratchy. This happens. I probably should have some bubbly water, actually. Um, but yeah, regardless, um, welcome to your reading. Thank you so much for being patient. It's been absolutely wild for me. I had so much come up. Like your reading was like, like um, there's probably like a week where your reading was next. I ha I kept having these things come up that kept pushing it back. Like when I was actually able to do it. So here we are. Um, and uh, I think your daughter said that you were looking to do uh potentially do uh, uh, the specific language uh the uh current astrology reading also which is a live one so um yeah i think she said she, just, she would just connect us basically but um yeah well nice to meet you i'm jesse jesse as you know <clears throat> now let's see if my magical ring water <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I think we're good. So, um, I'm just going to take it off so I can preserve the bubbles. So, I will be presenting uh, any other crystals that I use for these purposes. Literally, I'm not like a huge like crystal thing. I have like a few that I go to. I have them near me and just kind of hold them and meditate with them. And yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen, but I want to make sure that I hide your last name, which I did not do. So let's get down <clears throat> to business. So yeah, I will be sharing the screen. I'll sometimes I, I pop back and forth. Um, show my face usually more towards the end. Uh, but these days I really like to kind of get in the zone in this type of way. So um, take a look. So you got a cap rising with Saturn on the ascendant. Interesting. And so the chart ruler is the the planet that, that rules Capricorn, your ascendant, right? The chart ruler is um, a special planet in everyone's chart. It's the planet that can that is uh that rules the sign of your rising. So your rising is Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. And then you have Saturn, which is this one, right on your ascendant. So that makes it a very, very powerful Saturn. Very, very powerful. Um, you know, very karmic life in a sense that the first 30 years were probably not so easy. Um well, we'll see what the chart says, but um, you know, you, you may have like we have to we have to connect everything together. But you know, you, you definitely maybe would have like kind of had to have grown up too early as your car on a fire sign. No, it's Um. So it makes one like innately responsible. Um. It makes one able to, you know, there's there, there's often issues with with taking things too seriously, which can like like when 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 younger, which can have like relationship issues and sad. And let's see, it's it's squaring your moon, so it's completely related to the relationship with your mother <clears throat> or whoever the, the the feminine parent was, which. These days, I mean, it's always usually the the mother of the moon, but in 
especially since you're born in 61. I can't imagine being the father um, just of generals and society and stuff. So it's very interesting um, that you felt a calling to get a ring from me. Um, and I see why. Because, um, well, I mean, besides the, your daughter probably having had a good experience. Um, well, actually, I don't, I don't know if you've, if you've seen any of my content or if you saw your daughter's reading or not. However, um, I'm a karmic astrologer. So, um, and one second, I, 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 I'm so sorry. I accidentally opened a message. Uh, like I, on my phone. Hold up, hold up one second. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So it's so so that typically comes. So so the moon is in Aries. The sun is in Scorpio. Oh, it sounds familiar. It's my girlfriend. <laughs> um, she's a Gemini rising, and um. You know that that uh, Saturn Capricorn rising can make one quite hard on themselves. Um, you know, perhaps the mother was quite fiery, quite independent, maybe even like masculine in a sense. Um, and <clears throat> perhaps there's. There, you know, there, like a, a a real disconnection existed between, uh, mother and mother and father. Like, maybe not like. Let me try not to say like, maybe not something so negative as opposed to just being two very different people. And, the square, so the square to your ascendant. Um. And your or Saturn, you know, conjunct your Sun and square your Moon, right? Square is a ninety degree angle. See it here. Highly, highly significant. Line. Now let's see if it squares anything in Scorpio. Ooh. We're not Scorpio. I mean Libra. Nothing Libra. Okay. So no T square. Um, anything on the other side? No. So basically, yeah, when you have um Sun Square Saturn and you're and you're a Capricorn rising, uh, you are a Saturnian. You're someone who, um, is you know an authority figure, someone like naturally, um, someone who, just uh had to grow up fast, and had to, you know, and, and a lot of times kind of skip over that, that process, that that normal children growing up process because you really need to to um have like some like there's probably like some some responsibility that you needed like maybe a lot of times when I see this it's like they had to take over for like the father in some type of way um or the mother um, I, I've seen this in a lot of charts of like where like the like you know one or both the parents were completely dysfunctional and like they they almost felt like they had to be the parent. I've seen the charts of people who 
and you know, we'll, we'll talk in the follow up session um, about you know the specifics, <clears throat> but yeah, or even like where one parent passed early and they really had to step up and like fill that role, for like uh, younger younger siblings. So uh, okay, let's see here. Mm -hmm. So the the overall energy of 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 having you know the moon in Aries in the fourth house square Saturn is that the moon in that sign Aries it's it's very explosive. I mean it has a tendency to be very very explosive, um, and it can there can be anger issues and there can be impulse control issues and there's a huge huge need to be able to kind of handle it's like almost like handling like a ferrari or something like that like which the ferrari is like an intern like an internal ferrari if that metaphor makes sense and um you know it makes one it gives one an emotional need for you know complete independence like being a pioneer in their life feeling like you're free like you're doing you you know you're not you're not just doing what society tells you you are doing you pure authentic authentic um like kind of authentic very assertive energy too so with that the square of saturn would have inhibited that a good amount, which can be very difficult. Um, and it can lead to someone, you know, moon, any moon aspects that are from outer planets, that are squares or oppositions, conjunctions are very, very difficult. Um, and, you know, when you connect moon with Saturn, it leads moon Aries. It's like a part of you that wants to just like go out and just like explore just like assert your 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 emotional nature and in just your emotional desires and needs, but then the Saturn is restricting. It's restrictive. So uh, yeah, it, it can be very frustrating. It can make it so one has trouble with them, you know being vulnerable, and this gets way easier around the Saturn turn. Like your whole chart, your whole life probably turned changed around like twenty nine and a half thirty. Maybe like 31, 32, you really start to integrate it more. Because sometimes like the events or the overall energy of the Saturn return is just so much that it takes that extra time to really fully integrate like what happened, you know? Aside from that, um, Once it is, you know, because every hard aspect is meant to be overcome in, in in its lowest form. So when Saturn square moon is overcome, it can create someone who is very emotionally resilient and very emotionally responsible. Someone who can put up with like a ton of just BS, like they, like they felt like in in their early life, like they 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 had to like work really really hard on their emotions and on their on retaining like stability in their life and then around 30 magically that energy just boom goes away so it you know saturnian people tend to be people who are successful and that's you know the whole thing with capricorn saturn success you know because they they have to work so so much harder than other people early in life when all those karmic energies are in place and then when those difficult limitations go away, they're still they're still left with that that drive. You know, it doesn't just go away; it doesn't just disappear. So, yeah, it's it's a very very nice one. Um, and okay, so then the next question is: so what does an Aries moon, and then Scorpio's sun is square Uranus? And Chiron. And are they together? 
No, T square shoots out at 27 Taurus. Interesting. Right on the Vesta. So Vesta is, um, you know, becomes an important planet for you. Of the, of the 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 resolution around um the T square, which is like if you look at here, um, the T square is like a bone arrow. So this squares your sun ninety degrees, and your sun squares Uranus. It doesn't have to be exactly ninety degrees, right? It's an it's an orb, as they say. And so that bone arrow shoots out in the Vesta. So Vesta is, is an asteroid, and uh, it is very um, kind of like the yeah the the flame of life in the fifth house in Taurus. Um, it, it as you see, you know, there's like a big focus on creative projects. Um, lots of it says you have the dedication and perseverance which you can produce great creative works. You can also be dedicated to children. You have the ability to work in a stable and persistent manner. You are committed to working in a comfortable and predictable manner. You need, you need to avoid becoming inflexible. Um, so anything else for you for saying it? Yeah, so I mean, Vesta is 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 Saturnian in, in itself. So, um, what it's saying, you know, being a Saturnian, it, it's it's a it's it's there's a Saturn like quality to it, right? It's 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 work oriented and that and this that and forth. So, um, the fact that that you know that's where the T square shoots out to me. It's kind of saying through, like, if you have like a creative Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is in Scorpio for you, conjunct Neptune, which is these two together is all oh, amazing creativity. It links your artistic abilities with your ima like imagination, and it's in you know Scorpio, a water sign, a highly intuitive and creative sign. So that's really, really, really something special. And I think with that best of placement, what it's really trying to say is that by you, the way to, and I'll get into like what this whole T-square means, but the way to resolve it is through hard, like hard work that's, or not hard work, fun, fun work, fun, fun yet constructive work. And being a Saturnian, you're someone who, is 1000% able to turn your hobbies or the things that you actually would do for fun into your work. You might actually be someone that like has fun working, right? So that's kind of, yeah, the resolution point, but more on the T-square. So the sun square Uranus, that's a tough one. Um, it's tough because Uranus is an outer, you know, an outer planet that is, uh, it's like the great liberator, right? And it is very, very rebellious. It's Aquarius energy, if you if you if you catch my drift. And when it squares the sun, it can make. Oh, well, I I don't I don't hate this aspect. Um, what I've seen from it is that it it, it makes someone have like a very very unique, um life kind of purpose you could say like it's very unique it's not the norm um i'm sorry about my voice by the way there's literally nothing you can do about this <clears throat> it's usually more chipper and talking like this and that but like yeah also, I think my, it, yeah it, uh, it's weird it's like i like to talk like this like kind of like seven or eight out of ten Seven out of ten kind of tone. 
that usually sounds so much different than it sounds now. Now it sounds like I'm like a four, which makes me sound sound like more lethargic and less energetic. But usually I'd be like talking like this or like, you know, I, I can't even do it because my voice is screwed. But yeah. Um so yeah, the sunscreen Uranus is, is it's all about doing things your own way. Um it makes a very complex person, very independent, very intelligent, ingenious, kind of uh, future oriented, right? But they can really piss off like the more conservative people. Um, and they, yeah, a lot of times they, they don't discover their, their true life purpose till like later in life. So it's like, it can be like 52 at times when they really discover it or, you know, when, when that Uranus opposition happens in mid forties, um, that is a, is it 42, 44, I think then, you know, that, that's a time where, you know, or just like any, you know, key, um, Uranus transits, <clears throat> like, let's see. Yeah, like whenever, <laughs> whenever it opposed your your moon, for example, would be one. Um, I not can tell you how old you were. I have no idea. I could calculate it, but it'd be a waste of time. Um, but if you really want to know, I could, I could, I could figure out in the follow up. Um, you just have to remind me. But yeah, so it just gives like a very rebellious personality, and sometimes people like. Like they can be like the like when younger, like they just want to move move so far away from the consensus reality that um sometimes they 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 will go beyond it to the point to where it, it like doesn't make sense, you know, like like they want to be rebellious and break the rules so much that like they actually do it in a way that like almost harms themselves, not like physically necessarily, although Uranus can be like that. Um, but they're really able, it gives you this amazing ability to like conceptualize like futuristic ideas that are beyond the boundaries of like the world limitations, which is so interesting because Saturn in Capricorn is all about that very thing. So this is already a psychological split that I see in the, ch in the chart, um, between this very, uh, eccentric side and then it's this very the, the you know so so the way you're ascendant right with saturn the way you appear to others will be a lot different than kind of your you know other parts of yourself right you'll appear to be very your appearance would most likely be quite and is that vega on your saturn but yes like quite like you you wouldn't expect so, so you could could have been a kid that like, um, looked just like so responsible, like they've never done anything wrong, and then they were like the behind the behind the scenes trickster, something like that, you know. Um, and then there's also a square between you know your your Aries Moon. I already said that, but like the square between the Moon and the Ascendant is interesting because when we talk about the big three, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, um. When you have moon square ascendant, it go it, it it does the exact thing I just said. Um, people see you for something that you're not, so you're way more like out there and rebellious and independent and fiery and exciting. You're way like you're you're not boring at all, um, and you have an emotional need for that that thrill, right? But people might have seen you when you're younger. Um, in in a way, let me see if the Senate has anything. Any, no, yeah, no aspects that are like gonna help it. So yeah, you may have been seen as kind of like a a straight edger, which probably could have helped you a lot in life. I'm sure it did. You know, I always say that that when there's like the Capricorn rising, especially Capricorn Saturn Saturn rising, the Saturn and Capricorn rising person, when they're and by the way, we have very similar Saturns, which is really interesting. And we have really sim we have opposite North nodes and South nodes, which is like just so important for this reading. 
because it's showing that uh, I, like a lot of of we have a like, similar karma in, in in different ways. You'll see what I mean more in a second. Um. So I proceed. Um. Yeah. So 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 um. I always say that, that one. It, it it just like it kind of it can be frustrating because people like see you in one way, but like internally on like on that that real emotional level, you're completely different. You know, you're completely different. And people, and it can make one feel very, very misunderstood and, and unseen. Aside from that, let's think. Let's see. Um. Yeah. So, so the other side of the of the T square with the sun in Scorpio, which I don't really need to go into sun signs. Come on. And actually, the more about the Uranus one. What else can I say about that? Um. It, it can create someone who who like who just like likes to shake things up, you know, like who 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 doesn't like the like like tr tradition, who's anti tradition, um, but like there's that split, like I said, there's part of you that's that that's like that, and it's part that's not, um, someone I mean, who likes to like who who just like like can just like out of nowhere like dramatically change the direction of their life, um, be very so lots of impulsive energy in your chart, um, so there's a big need to ground, big need to ground. And um, yeah, so so that that's where that Saturn energy actually really helps because it, it makes you take a step back and be like, wait, is this the best decision for me? Should I drop out of university and pursue modeling or something? You know, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, um, and also Saturn on the ascendant can speak of modeling, it can make one feel as though they're ugly or they're undesirable when they're younger. It can, it can really affect the, the self esteem, the self esteem, even if they're like gorgeous, you know? So that's uh, one to know about. And yeah, the fact that square, square of the moon means that it's, it's most likely related to a mother wound. Uh, so, you know, maybe an un, un, unmet need from the mother. And is it and it sextiles your sun though, which is interesting. The aspect pattern, I don't know what it's called. Um, but the point is that um and then yeah, there's a quincunx between sun and moon, as I said before. So the scorpion areas side are quite they're 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 different, but they're similar. I literally live with one, so I get I understand it. Um but basically Basically, like the 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 Scorpio in Capricorn, they those two parts you get along really well, and those are the two more visible parts. So, uh, it, it will make someone usually more serious. More serious. Um. But yeah, it, you 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 kind of never know. It's 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 a little bit unpredictable. So um with with um the sun squaring Chiron, um Chiron Pisces in the third house, you know, that could be issue relate to like issues with the siblings, um and uh you know uh, palace there, um which is like the third eye. Um that just gives like um like like someone who can like acquire intelligence like through their intuition and through writing so like like but and through communication like some type of like psychic communication in general but what can happen with Chiron there is that there can be pain around you feeling that you can truly express yourself especially um Chiron and Pisces which is all about spiritual wounds and fears of like yeah, of, of of uh there can be fears of mortality, fears of like of, of the divine, not like God fearing like in, in the good sense, but just like yeah, just there can be lots of spiritual wounds. It can be um something related to Richard Blackman L. I don't know. Um night. It can be something like a unseen powers attacking you, all that kind of stuff. 
So that is interesting. Um. And another thing about the sun and Uranus, like I said, is that it gives, like I, like I said, a very special life purpose. And oftentimes it's very, it's very humanitarian. And that actually goes with your chart because look at how much is in the 11th house, is the house of Aquarius, which is humanitarianism. So that is where your sun is. Wherever your sun is, is like very important by house, right? So with all these other plants there too, there's this huge chance that you're, that uh, either humanitarianism or work working in groups of like-minded people, midheaven and Scorpio it could be like something research oriented. It could be some. It could be like a spiritual healer type 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 thing, uh, especially with Chiron and Pisces. Like I definitely get spiritual healer vibes from that. But the 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 pain is around like um I, I'm I'm getting parents, father maybe not being able to express his spiritual side and emotional side and then maybe that ha affecting you in some way this would be way more difficult um you're from hawaii um although aren't you is he i just had a, a, a client yesterday who was korean living but like have been in hawaii forever and isn't are you, isn't you know same japanese i don't like to make to guess i'm usually pretty good at guessing last names nationalities Pretty sure I forget, but yeah. Um, my point with that was just like the societal kind of standards and, and what are men and women, um, you know, supposed to be, and how it'd be a lot harder if you had a men's chart with all this energy. But anyways, um, so yeah, so so that's kind of how those connect. Um, and yeah, just like freedom is so important to you. So so this has like big implications to. You know, you feeling like the need to liberate yourself when you're in relationships that feel like they're too tight and um, where you feel boxed in, which is very, which creates another split. And um, the reason for that is because your Venus is in Scorpio, which is all about, and it's conjunct Neptune, which is literally the most like romantic but like merging like like the desire to like really like merge with like on a soul level with your partner so yeah that 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 split would be would be an interesting interesting one to explore when we talk live um but i feel like you have this this ability if you are like a creator and you know, it's never too late to start, honestly, to ch channel that pain through whatever, you know, big life goal you have or whatever creative outlet you have, um, which is which is excellent. It's really excellent. So, yeah, um, just the need for for, for that for, for for that that Taurus. Uh, energy the fifth like uh like i said before the the you know the way to undo this is to find something that you know taurus is, is very reliable and it gives back you know it gives back and um you know sun sun square chiron could could by itself can be really about just just pain just just pure woundedness to the to the to the sense of identity, usually from the father, um, and then also the square of the Uranus could be someone who really wants to rebel from the father, um, and then the moon square Uranus could create a very strict and cold mother. So, we see how this is going, and I'm not gonna guess if they're together or not, um. You know, three, a three degree, two, two and a half, two and two thirds degree quincunx. So, my guess would be that they are either not, either not together. I don't know how that works in, I know in, in many cultures, um, obviously, like parents will stick it out 
regardless. But I don't know where, you know, I don't know about you and your history, your family history. But basically, um, they most likely had very different worldviews. And there's probably some clashing. But yeah, that that one's that that's a really hard one to, to predict. So I don't I say that like kind of just like, you know, you'll know. You'll know, you'll know, you'll know. Um Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, um, then when we speak of love, um, Aries moon, fourth house, it's interesting because there's a part of you that need this, um, this, this independence, right? There's a part of you that, that needs to feel like you're moving your life in, in a very positive uh, direction that's very linked to you. And this is, you know, me being a karmic astrologer, I look at the North Node, North Node in Leo. Which is the like opposite of mine. My my north nodes in they're always opposite, right? The south node represents the been there, done that energy in past lives. The north node represents the metaphoric mountain that you have yet to climb, and you're really trying to get there. And I get so many clients who have south node in Aquarius who have no idea, and they all say the same thing. They all say that it's very hard for them to take center stage per se or to 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 accept like um you know to to accept what what's the word I'm looking for not honor um but to accept praise you know to 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 accept being special And I and and I just I just always hear it, you know. And it makes complete sense because in this lifetime, you, you know, you really are trying to find what I call authentic self-expression, right? Authentic self-expression. The idea I have with that is, um, you know, low Leo energy is about. I need to create something for other people's approval. That's lowly energy, right? And if I can't do that, then I'm just not going to create. I'm not going to. And also, I'm not. It, it can be beyond create creating. It could be I'm not going to, you know, go out in the world, you know, and and um, I'm not going to put myself out there in an authentic way. But really, at its core, it's it's about stepping into your inner child, which I've already spoken about how that most likely got pushed away. And it's very important for you. And the fire moon will make that easier because it's your moon is exactly trining 120 degrees, which is, which is a supporting aspect, your north node, which usually means that there's like a good karmic relationship between you and the mother. That's what it usually means. So I know these are kind of like contradicting. But this the 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 nodes are square the sun, so that would usually mean there's a definitely a difficult one with the father. So the, you know relationships can be mixed. You know, like the the moon square Saturn, like it could have been something that you guys worked through. It could have been something that was that you know my my gut is telling me that it's something that like ran in the family, maybe around like perfectionism, um, and you know something that was kind of unconscious to her. But yeah, that usually means that you guys had like a, uh, a kind of positive karma. So, um, but yeah, so like, like, yeah, the, the Aries moon individual definitely needs, um, in the fourth house, like they need a mix of home, of homebodiness, someone who, 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 who is a homebody and who, who, who wants, you know, a family and who wants that. And, and you know they they want that security, but at the same time, they don't necessarily 
like they 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 want that security, but then they also want that that thrill, that excitement. Like they they want to really feel like they're like really alive, alive. You know what I mean? They really want to feel like they're alive, alive. So yeah, um. How does that relate to? And then you you have it try in the Uranus, so that will make you quite unconventional in your tastes. So you wouldn't date someone like just based on like, like you know, like uh, their money or their their status. Like it'd be more about like who the like you 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 you'd prefer like a more authentic or authentic person, right? A more even eccentric. Like, but in a good way, like someone who's just who, 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 and very, very genius. Like, you'd be very attracted, like that kind of like genius, like forward thinking person, because that's how you are. Um, outside the boxer. Now, then you know we throw Juno and Venus and Mars and all these other planets in there, and um, you know with Venus. With Venus and Scorpio conjunct Neptune, um, you have to. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you have Instagram, but I, just, I made a really good video. I and I, I'm 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 just being honest. It wasn't astrology. You can even search on YouTube. It's called. It just search Jess Anderson on YouTube, and it's like my latest. It's like um called the need for compromise in romantic relationships moving away from disney twin flame idealistic romanticism it's it's just like this is one of the better videos i made in a while i'm honest when i'm good i'm honest when i'm bad um so Yeah, the thing with with Scorpio and wh why I'm relating to that is that Scorpio, so 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 Venus and Neptune together, um, it can create that rose colored glasses energy. It can create that person who, um, you know, who just sticks with someone because of the potential, you know, um, and they don't allow themselves to really venture out. From that, like they can stay stuck in relationships that are no longer serving them, and yeah, it, it it just overall it's it's just a little bit difficult, you know. Um, it's just a little bit difficult, and um, but like the thing is, it's so creative and it's so and, it, and, it, and it's so, and it's so romantic, but. Um, one has to watch out for for people taking advantage of them. Also, it's on your midheaven, so this is very like common for people who actually like their career is art, like art, art artistically like related to art. Like, I'm not even joking. So that's beautiful, but yeah, and in, in love, it's just like you know, uh, it's very important for people who have this. And by the way, I, I read your chart like the same way, and like like I don't I don't like only only way. Um, I read a chart differently as if, if it's for a children, a child, <laughs> a children. Um, but I read, I, I, you know, it's all probabilities, right? So I'm not going to read it differently for someone who's who's 18 or, or who's, you know, who's as long as they're an adult, I'm going to read it the same way. Um, but yeah, so so that's very prominent for for artists. Um. People who can just capture their dream, their dream imagination, be, but like, but actually, like, like, like capture it and, and physically put it, like, you know, like if they're a painter, like, like see that vision in their mind and, and have that beautiful inspiration connected to that Venusian process. Um, but by itself, Venus and Scorpio people can be very, you know, in love. They have to learn about about not giving in to power struggles. And um, they have to they have to understand that there can be a uh, tendency to be a bit obsessive and to be a bit um, overbearing. And they're so passionate and so loyal and love, right? Um, but not 
it, it's not everyone that can just match that, you know? <laughs> um, and there's lots of intensity. And, you know, Venus in its core is about self-love. So when you have Venus in Scorpio, um, it can add sort of a sting. Um, and, and, and it's also like what you value is how you spend. So, um, you know, you'll definitely be interested in the esoteric and the occult and in psychology and in, in anything that's like the underground, like the unseen world, like the mysteries of life. It'll be the taboo. Um, you'll be very interested in that. Um, but what can happen with the Neptune is that it can fog one's, one's self-image um, and, and make it difficult for them to see themselves clearly, which Saturn actually now is acting in a good way because being on your Senate in Capricorn is actually giving you, well, they're at least giving you a way of seeing, of understanding your personality and how to get, get around the world better. But the Neptune, your son, can really cloud your sense of identity. And that can be difficult. But this is the key, or not on your son, on your, on your Venus. Your, so, not, so not your sense of identity. Well, is it close to your son? No, not close enough. Um, so, and it's Mercury. So there's, there's Mercury's there too. So it's like, it's like um, it, Venus is, is self love, right? And what you value. So it can, it can cloud that, um, and it can make someone who, who, yeah, like falls in love with potential and uh, needs to take anything romantic slowly. I hate this like voice thing. I know that you probably don't care at all, but. It's just like annoyance. Like I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Um, so, yeah, like uh, the Venus, um, Neptune, Mercury, all together, you know, conjunct the midheaven. It creates someone who is deeply, deeply empathetic. And who wants to take that into their outer world mission, their dharma. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, there's definitely that warning sign. So finding relationships where there's that balance of fun, but also of like the two souls, two souls merging and becoming one. Um, that that like very tantric kind of like next level um, soul bonding, um, which that's, you know, there's a major split there, right? Um, and Neptune adding further rom romanticism in there. And then Mercury um, being there, well, I'll talk about that after. But I mean, in relation to love, it'll make you really have a big need to kind of uh, communicate with your, with your lovers and, have very vocal relationships that are intellectual um and yeah you'll, you'll you'll be very attracted to one's intellect especially if that human is doing something that is a little bit different you know and even if they're not if they just are are willing to express their full selves it's huge now then we think so Juno is the asteroid of marriage. It's what we look for in a partner, a life partner, not just Venus, which is more dating energy. The Juno is like marriage energy. So in Pisces, it can create someone who definitely uh, Juno and Pisces, you know, will be so attracted to someone who just has spirituality and compassion and faith in the divine and who you know is almost like there's like a huge like soul fam feeling right it's like it's it's very like I don't like to talk about twin flames but it kind of because I think my video, if you watch it, will explain why. Um, not that they don't exist, or not that I think they don't exist. Um, but yeah, 
Like, I just think that that will make you really, really want someone who who's soothing, calming, uh, who who lets you really be yourself and go when you want to go. But yeah, who and I say this, I've been saying this a good amount because I really like this phrase and it really applies here, where that that other person, you find home and refuge within that other person. So... So Venus is yeah. So it so so Pluto. Wait, what? Oh, it's sextiling Pluto. That's nice. That 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 just gets further, like, in like once. So like the the key is letting go of control and surrendering. And also another big key of your chart is 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 leaning into this Sagittarius Mars, which we'll get into, which is. Sagittarius is very funny, right? And Aries Moon too, a bit like less. Sag is funnier, so it's like about not taking life so seriously. That's like, and I know it sounds like such a cliche, but it's literally like the, it's the cure, you know, um, to not take life so seriously and to learn to laugh at yourself and your shortcomings, and in love to surrender and to 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 have a close friend. Um, or therapist or someone who's solid that you can go to and be like, you know, um, like, and this is getting, you know, you probably, I'm pro you're probably married or something, you know, so I'm just saying it how, how, how I would always say it, um, you know, who, who, but like, just like even, even with friends where you can like go to that person and just count on them to give you that solid advice of taking things slow and, and giving you giving you their objective opinion about the individual. So, okay, so um, okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so then having Mercury and Venus together with Neptune is literally making you a psychic channel. Whether you have been able to dive into that or not. We all have Latin latent lens, latent um, talents that we haven't manifested. And um, having all those two together, one, Mercury and Neptune, uh, it connects your brain with the other side, with, um, you know, the, the it connects your brain with the collective unconscious. Um, and you have this natural ability to just understand deep spiritual things that other people just don't get. Um, and then when you add Venus to the picture, it can create someone who is, you know, who's, who's able to communicate, um, make a message that might, that might be somewhat like, not necessarily controversial, but just like, you know, like they're able to create, to, to communicate something that's very, Essentially heavy, I guess you could say, um, in a way that's very like grounding people. Um, so it's really an excellent place. Very, 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 very excellent. Very, very excellent. And um, yeah, so the three, the three connect together, and it would, it would definitely be a shame if you, if you, um, if you weren't really taking advantage of those energies because you know those are those are our gifts those are cosmic gifts you know there's no other way of putting it those are cosmic cosmic gifts um and yeah being able to to have that connection with um you know through and, and to be able to like like literally chant like chant like channeling like have you ever just like maybe you do spiritual work but just like sitting and just like freely associating like after like a deep meditation just like writing down like the union kind of like like automatic writing just like what comes to you you know and just like like the whole thing is locking out the, the inhib inhibitions now with the north node where it is right 
North Node being this extremely important point in the way I do astrology, and, and, and everyone agrees that it's, it's very important. Um, and one second, you look at one thing. Hold up. I'll get back to what I was saying about the North Node. Okay. So, yeah. So with with the North Node in Leo, um, you know, it it it, it creates an individual as I, as I was saying who is meant to shine. Who's meant there's like a strong strong creative purpose in their lifetime. So it's really about taking risks in that area and trying lots of different things. Now it's in the eighth house though. It's a house of Scorpio, and you are a Scorpio. So um, mixing, like um, like south and then south node in Aquarius in the second, um, it's it's about taking yeah, it's about taking risks, but risks create like like creative risks that that are also kind of like goes back to the, to the inner child work. Like, like almost like fun risks. I don't know how else to say it. By being in touch with your inner child, you quite literally break through lots of karma. Quite, quite literally. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's massive, 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 massive. And um, you know, South Node in in Aqu Aquarius in the second, um, it could have like created someone who who had a tendency to stay close to home I, I guess like, like definitely like like someone who who is of service you're you're probably of service um but you know you 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 didn't take there's a tendency to, to not take like the scary road when it comes to like um going deep into your emotions and that's why you are a scorpio see how it all connects You're a Scorpio in this lifetime because Scorpio is a sign of death, rebirth, transformation. And there's parts of you that need to evolve in this lifetime. And that, I don't mean that in a bad way. No, it's a very high evolutionary intent. Um, so spirituality is, is one of the best, most powerful things for you. And that can take any shape or form. You know, um, one you know one one human spirituality is very different to the others. It's like you know, I, mean, I have a podcast called the Jesse and Trey Podcast, and we talk a lot about like how no two spiritual paths are the same. Um, you know what Buddha, the Buddha path might be you know completely different than the Jesus path, for example, like a. Whatever example. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, like, and, and it goes back to your net, like, so, like, this whole rebelliousness, like, there, that there's that's there for a reason to break, break free of the shambles. And I, I would be very, very happy if I heard that you, like, you know, have like creative hobbies and whatever it is that could be very cool so yeah the mercury in scorpio by itself it creates a deep probing mind someone who wants to go beneath the surface and learn and learn and learn and they can become obsessed 
with information when they learn when 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 they find something that they really really love like there's no stopping them they just go you know they just go completely um so it's nice definitely a nice thing definitely a nice thing um and they can have a quite intense way they they they, they refuse to have small talk um they're allergic to it your whole chart's allergic to small talk and the aries moon will be very you know like um yeah it, it, uh, the aries moon part will be like i'm not having it you know like no way like but like you know there is that square like square of the saturn which also i didn't really say earlier um i don't think i did at least um Sun square uh, or moon square Saturn can create issues with depression, mental health issues with depression, uh, early, like, uh, mainly like, you know, until the Saturn return earlier in life, right? Um, and it really, really pushes one to have to really work on themselves. So you see how, how your whole chart, it's pushing you, the parents you have and all this, it's putting, it's put you in this position where you've had to like really work on yourself. But then we open up to the Mars. Um, let me just check one thing. Yeah, so the Mars is where Uranus also, um, just like the Sun is, right? Um, this one is closer. It's four degrees away. The Sun is is seven in different signs. So the Sun square Uranus, yeah, it's it's still there, but it's not a it's not like a super tight one. So remember earlier when I was like saying something about like not taking about like t taking risks. Well, <laughs> um, like physical ones. Mars square Uranus people will they will do that, and your Mars is in the twelfth house, which is related and it's you. It's also oh my god, it's square Uranus and Pluto and Chiron. Damn, and it's in the twelfth house. That is crazy. And it's in a fire sign. Well, um, happy you're still alive. <laughs> I mean that half jokingly, but like, um, or more than half. Okay. But like, look, my, I, I have a list that I made. I don't know how long ago I made it called most volcanic. Let's see if I can find it. Um, placements in astrology and uh, these two were like top of the list where is it 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 there's no way I didn't post this one wow oh I found it. yeah it's here explosive astrology placements it's from the date is October 9th on at Justin and Astro. If you're ever interested, you can go on Instagram on computer, whatever phone. Obviously phone, but not a lot of people, not everyone knows that you can just go to Instagram.com. And I don't even know if you, I don't even think you have to have an account to watch like a video from a public. Yeah. You don't. So yeah, it's from October 9th, but I'm just going to, Let's see. I, I think I, I probably have both in here, right? So the first one I had was Mars. No, Moon Square Mars, which you do not have. Um, I didn't put these in order or anything. Um, and then yeah, Mars. I go Mars, especially in a fire sign like you, square or opposite Uranus. And I wrote, I think of this combination is a volcano, all in caps. Mixing with a thunderstorm, Uranus. So just picture that. A volcano in a thunderstorm. These people can have so much energy and there can often be inherent frustration. They, mu they most definitely need to find a creative or physical outlet or things can go wrong. This person has no regard for risk. I just wrote no regard, but I know I'm in. I, I totally screwed that up. Damn it, I hate women. 
number six. Um, and then with the Pluto, and I'm going to add to these, by the way, just so you know. But I'm just like reading what I wrote. With the moon, um, square, not moon, what am I talking about? Mars and Pluto. And then I also have Mars in the 12th house. If I don't have Mars in Pluto, I, am I crazy? Am I insane? Yeah, okay. No, I, I don't have Mars Pluto. That's that's the most volcanic one, and it's not on here. Oh my god, I'm like legitimately sad right now. Um. Okay, Mars square Pluto is like one of the most intense, fiery things you can possibly have, and I'll read the twelfth house one. Um. So this is the house of self undoing, and I have observed that many people with Mars here tend to be their own worst enemies when it comes to self sabotage. As I said before, both house people have a need to step out of their ego and fix their difficult karma by being a selfless, by, by being a selfless service to humanity, which I see a lot in your chart. So, um, with the Mars square Pluto, though, so crazy, you have all these, your Mars is is doing that, right? Um, like basically you can you can be in these in these cycles of just like like impulsion of being very very impulsive um and it can be very like very obsessive also so people who have this like they need to either do martial arts they need to do something physical um in younger clients i know you're like not from this generation of uh, I, I, I well I guess what I'm saying is like I don't know how marijuana was in a whole you know where you grew up at your time but one thing I've noticed a lot is people who have like a lot of fire like this um is that if they can't figure out how to like self regulate and a lot of the times they can have like low impulse control they just smoke a ton of weed very interesting because the weed kind of chills them out because it's you know it's difficult for them to find their own ways of doing it so yeah um yeah 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 one quick second actually you look at something Okay. So yeah, overall, um, overall, like the Mars and Pluto it is literally like. There's there there's there's this whole power struggle this this need to assert the one's dominance. It's really really good for like having like drive and career, but like in the twelfth house Mars, you can like kind of have one going like in circles and not really like and it can be like aimless. So that's why the eleventh house, why you have so many planets here, it's all about finding that higher purpose, and 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 having your your career with Neptune eleventh house, you know. Um, you know, being very like, like almost sacrificing for your career and, and loving, like like love, that deep love and commitment to it, um, and you know that's where a lot of your life main life purpose is is like in giving back, um, or just like whatever your version of that is. Um, it could also be, you know, really related to it, like your friends and the groups and organizations you're a part of, right? 
and also just like your big big picture goals right of your unique um purpose which could be completely different like like it could it could literally be like with north node in you know over here it could literally be something like to be authentic like like just learning to be like it's so, it sounds so simple you know but just like learning just like yeah just being like learning to be authentic um learning to accept praise that's a tough one for 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 the the, the Aquarius out there. Learning to accept praise and learning that it's okay to be selfish sometimes, and you you don't always have to give give give. You have to allow yourself in this lifetime to take the gifts and the good karma that you've achieved. But there is some difficult karma. But like I believe that you're you've taken this on for a reason. So yeah, this one is like great for athletes. Maybe you're an athlete. It just gives like endless energy reserves. Um, I just remember there's one thing I want. I just started learning about that one and check. Um, it's more like astronomy related, but you can like really like it's great for leadership. It's just like the thing is that like sometimes people like this they they want to assert too much dominance, but they have like this endless like like in whatever work you do, like I'm I'm positive that unless you had like a power struggle thing that you were very successful. Um, which it's you could have like definitely like like in a, in a man's working world, you know, this Capricornian like patriarchy world, like you have a chart of someone who could just completely succeed in it, which is very very cool, very cool, very cool, very cool. Um, yeah, let me see this. I said things like really weirdly and slow. I'm drinking kombucha right now. It's like, whatever. I'm not going to explain how I drink some kombucha. Okay. So, so, so. Yeah, aside, aside from that, so yeah, there can be lots of temper tantrums. Um, and like just lots of just, just storms that come out of nowhere, which can obviously have massive relationship issues. That's why your Juno in Pisces seeks to have a very calming zen person and third house someone who you can communicate with on a very like deep spiritual level okay and then so i i i, I kind of i didn't even see this but then i made mention to it about good karma well guess what second house jupiter is the and okay in in plastic the, the house system that a lot of astrologers use that i don't use your Jupiter would be in the first house. Um, in my system, it's second house. And that is about money and self-esteem and internal values. I always refer to Jupiter in the second house as the financial guardian angel. And seldom do I get blocked or like people telling me like that wasn't my experience like almost never happens so when I see that it goes back to something I was just intuiting before that your karma like some people have money karma but because you've been so giving in past lives it's really about you understanding yourself better um and yeah, the Jupiter second house will 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 tend to 
create that. And it's an Aquarius, which it makes you ultra giving, ultra giving, ultra humanitarian, very friendly, group oriented. Um, you know, do anything for your friends, and you know, having your Venus eleventh house also is very, very good for friends. But Neptune there, you have to watch out for sneaky friends, but it's good to have friends that you have this deep spiritual connection with and um, that you can talk to about really deep topics. And fewer is, is fewer, but better is more with the Scorpio energy. And maybe you even work with them, you know, with your midheaven there. You work in groups. So yeah, the big one is Mars. Is is uh, Mars obviously in the planet of war and assertiveness, and basically it's just about, um, yeah, find, finding um, finding things that can get you out of those uh, potential <laughs> super intense times. Now this is another T square, interestingly, that shoots out. You see. It's just like the sun one, but this one instead of shooting on in Taurus shoots out a Gemini down here, sixth house Gemini. Now, what is that about, and how can that resolve all of this like very like, kind of like bubbling under the surface volcanic energy? Um, well, Gemini at its highest is about finding one's true voice, which is where your Chiron is in the third house, which means you have pain. And you suffered around not being able to express your true self. And the sixth house is about service. So it keeps going back to service, right? Service, it's about good health. Um, it's about, yeah, treating yourself well on a, a physical, mental, spiritual, ment you know, emotional level. And um, I think, you know, sixth house is all is very routine based. So it would it would speak to the importance of, um, for example, like in this case, having like a, a, a physical routine, right. That, that you go to, whether it's, it's, it's going on a walk or, you know, um, doing something, something like, like my mom, she plays tennis, right. My mom's born in 64. So three, three years after you. So she plays tennis, right? Um, and she doesn't have these 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 types of aspects, but she absolutely loves it. Um, but it's not a very intense sport. But I think, yeah, there's just there's just a need to get out energy. So I'm thinking more around like the creative side of it now. Um. Yeah, but like really like just like continuous hard work towards your, your ambitions and um it's just it's just great for like a rise to power. Um but people might feel threatened by you and um and wanna get revenge like want not not get revenge, wanna get like wanna like you know, screw you over. So the the key is to not retaliate and to, to really like to look at power more as an internal thing as and not have like these power struggles with lower people. And I mean, lower in, the, in that kind of way. You know how I mean it. So, yeah, pretty much um, Jupiter, we talked about that. Saturn, we talked about that. Um, so, yeah, and then and then uh, Pluto in the ninth with Black and Lilith, that's like some major witch energy. Yet. Um, and. Is it? No. And yeah, it, like Pluto Ninth House, it means that you know you're on this like deep spiritual quest, right? You're on this deep, deep spiritual quest, and you're really, really trying to find yourself in that way. And um yeah, that's kind of what it is, right? So you're yeah, you're really trying to find yourself spiritually in this lifetime, and you have tons of firepower towards that. Um, and you could, yeah, like, like, um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people who, I should remember this, who have that ninth house Pluto, they tend to not feel like that connected to like 
where they were born or where they were raised. And they feel like like random karmic connections, like different places in the world. And there's this big need to, there can be even like an obsession with traveling. So, you know, obviously Scorpio is very intuitive. So following that Scorpionic intuition on where you need to go is huge. And then Mars is in Sag, which is the sign of traveling. So, um, which in 12th house is past life. So it's like, yeah, traveling to like holy sites, you know, Machu Picchu, not Machu Picchu, you know, like what I'm talking about, like holy, like the earth chakras, Mount Shasta, place like that. That could be really, really excellent for you. Um, and yeah, like Black Moon Lilith is in Virgo. So that means that like you're kind of yourself, like you at your worst, you like we all have a Black Moon Lilith. Your self defeating purpose is when A, you're inflexible, like philosophically, like you're such a rebel that you don't want to like even hear the other side. And this is like, like I said, this is something that's just a potential. A lot of people, they work through their Black Moon Lilith as they mature. Um, and in Virgo, it's about perfectionism, which can totally come from that moon square Saturn. Of I need to get 100, 100, 100, 100, and when, then you get 90, and then you say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to go, like, if, if it's not 100, I just want zero. I'm not worth shit. That's, like, the energy of it. So, obviously, it's very problematic. And, yeah, overall, um, Overall, overall. Um, yeah, and then and then vertex ninth. So yeah, like in in Uranus ninth. So Uranus ninth, I think I talked about that a little bit. Uh, zero degrees, like you're you're really here to explore like lots of different like you'll have a very like um unique experience with truth. Like you're a you are a truth seeker and it's a life journey. And Scorpio is about that too. Um Scorpio tends to like look for that truth within themselves, within their own shadow. But like this ninth house and with that Sag um, Mars, you also look for it externally. And as, as a fire moon, you have a need to move. You, know, you can't just stay in one place. I mean, you, you, you ideally for you, it's like being able to like have adventures, but then have like a very comfy nest. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and we'll talk more. We'll talk more in the follow up about other things, but um, I think I'll go back to my face right now. The face reveal. Here I am. There's me. Um, yeah, just to add 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 some things in, like vertex ninth house. So it's like in 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 ver in in relationships. You know, you'll be in Virgo. You'll be very like giving. You'll show your love by, a lot by like how you. Like the things you do, um, although vertex like it's only supposed to be in five and like it's not supposed to be ninth house because of this whole sign system, or is it? Yeah, because you're born. It can occur if you're born in the tropic. Yeah, so it's it's really about like expanding your horizons beyond the culture you were born in, right? So it goes exactly what I was saying. So so, so contact with the with other other cultures and other philosophies and, and stuff like that. Um Okay. And then descendant, you know, being in, in cancer, it's just like it's really like speaking more to like just that 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 love need of 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 um uh, security of emotional and also financial security you know just security in general and wanting someone who you know like the family life um very very important and yeah and plastic which i don't do your, your moon would be in the third house by the way so it's like in that system a lot changes for you and um the sun would be in the 10th house. So it'd be like really, really related to your dharma and your career, which it still kind of makes sense in that way. Um, and you have no 12th house plans. But it changes a lot. 
but yeah, like just the moon, the third, like in that other system, it just, it just makes it very, very good for intelligence. And it, it kind of furthers the whole thing about writing being really important. Um, and also like higher and third house early schooling and sibling relationships could have been like very painful. Um, and yeah, also like gaining your own sense of individuality, right? Is 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 the issue that a lot of people have also with Chiron and Pisces, um, and like suffering from like from shame or grief, self victimization, all that stuff. It's all about like yeah, learning to heal through your own intuition. Okay, so I want to know where your series is because it's kind of like your second moon, uh, not as powerful obviously, and it is in Taurus. So, um, the series is like how we, we feel nurtured and how we nurture. So, um, in essence, you know, you are in Aries moon, but you, you really do, uh, feel nurtured into the fifth house when you are creating things of beauty. And, um, you know, you, 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 when you're a parent, right. When you're a parent, um, and yeah, you you're very warm and caring with children, and it makes one quite playful. And you like to kind of uh, nurture with your playfulness, and um, also with your your ability to to give stability to people. Um, with that that Capricorn rising, right? And all that Scorpio energy, you can be very, you, you can give like lots of stability and um, security. Yeah, stability and security. And yeah, like, 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 like enjoying being nurtured in very practical ways, like whether it's sensual, because this could be like love stuff too, like, like touch, like really engaging with the earth, right? And um, yeah. Like showing others you care through practical means. So what I didn't talk about is that there is a lack of air in your chart, um, as you can, or you know, you're not seeing it anymore. Um, so breath work, do it, and it's interesting because your south node. But this is this is like what I'm saying, karmic astrology. Check this out. You have. South node, the been there, done that, and Aquarius, which is an air sign. And then you have Jupiter in, in, in Aquarius too, but that's like kind of like a middle planet, right? It still kind of counts. I mean, in my system. Um, it's just like it like the 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 it doesn't it doesn't like rule like a conscious part of your personality, is is more what I'm saying. Like as much like the, like like as the inner planets, right? So I have a tick. So yeah, overall, um, overall, 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 overall. My mind just got. Oh yeah, um, not having air. Yeah, so like uh getting lots of oxygen um wherever you live like living like somewhere where there's really clean air is really important breath work is like the best thing um pushing yourself to but okay this, this is what i was gonna say yeah but pushing yourself to like get more air in your system and to like to communicate and to to to, to take social risks and talk to people from different walks of life but um so this is what's very interesting is that I feel like you have mastered the air element because it comes very easy for you is your South node. It's like, that's the passive tendency. That's like what you've mastered, but you like, you know, the, the been there done. It's like, it's like if I've like, you know, because it's like Mike, you know, it's like a uh, shitty sports example. I don't know. Like, like, it's, yeah, it's like if Michael Jordan, like, I don't know, he mastered basketball in this lifetime. Why would he, go and do it again next lifetime he's already done like gone as high as he can get but then you know maybe he would take the skills this is literally a good metaphor right take the skills that he learned from basketball into into his next pursuit um in the future life right um which might be completely 
opposite maybe his south nodes in like Aries and his north node will be in Libra. Um, who knows? So for you, it's about taking all that like that that ability to be group oriented, um, but to be a little bit selfish with yourself and to do the shadow work that you know you know you need to do. Um, and you've probably already done as a Scorpio because you kind of get forced into it. And yeah, like um, it's kind of kind of the rundown. Um, what have I not talked about? I talked about this, talked about that. I think there's one. I think Vesta. I'm missing. Yeah, Vesta in the fifth. No, I talked about Vesta. I talked I talk about all four asteroids. Okay, fixed stars. Let's just see if there's any big fixed stars. What time am I at? Uh, I always go so long. Okay, so... Nothing on the ascendant of significance. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah, Sappho and Mars in the 12th. So I don't keep no these in my head. And it's so small. I wish you could see. I'll, I'll, I'll show you for a second what I'm looking at. Just so you can like see like, like why I'm staring into like the screen. Because it's like they're so like tight, you know. And then it's like I can't tell which ones they are. So I'll spare you. Um, you can just look at me like staring into my screen. Um. Mm -hmm. this one whatever this is okay so let me pull up another screen here okay so moon has none midheaven I don't see anything. Look at the other one. Um, I can't see any. There's so many. this before so okay so you have psyche conjunct Pluto um, and that can make a really good criminal psychologist occultist astrologer magician um and yeah, it falls in the ninth house, so it it could be literally something that that's that's done to expand your your higher your, you know your higher higher truth, higher self, higher everything. Um, and there's Alfeca, I think, was the one that I saw that was like right smack. Um, what's it closest to? Right smack. On that that Venus, uh, Neptune, Mercury, but then also, Zubin El Shalami. You know, that's eighteen. Let's see, I know these. Now let me see which one thirteen is. Stop it. Okay, 
Ace. Oh, because they did change because you're born. Oh, shit. Okay. I need to remember I understand. Okay, so, oh, wow. So, it doesn't make any sense, though. How could it change that much? So, 20. Oh, okay, so. So, you might, you might be a Hawthorne alien like me. I would buy the book. It's like the Hawthorne code or something like that. And if you resonate with it, you might be a Hawthorne alien like me. Um, we're pretty rare we're pretty amazing especially when it comes to sound and, and art and you have it all of your chart and you have uh, Hawthorne and Jen, your son okay I'm trying I'm just like trying to like see okay this is this one this is this one this is this one so A6 is this one 31 is 9 18 is 13 that's what I thought. 18 is 13. So it's really just off that cup. Okay. Um, Fortuna 851. So yeah, Fortuna conjunct Venus could just like mean mean that you could you know make money and make fortune like with through the arts like it's it's re, re saying that, um, and oh god, okay yeah so so that one's good, and I think that's pretty much I I want to talk about this this alpha see if I can find anything about that. Um, that's out of range. Okay, so we are good here. Um, yeah, this is all good. And then I want to open up my other one. I'm really going above and beyond for you. No, I'm happy to. Um, so, yeah, okay. So let, let's, let's pull this info up. Oh, why is my thing frozen? Um, okay, so Sappho, okay, so Sappho and Mars creates a love warrior. Um, it's like giving like a, and I, started, I referenced this earlier, like a James Bond, uh, like uh, effect, right? But it, like I was saying, what I was saying earlier, it can be, it can give like a masculine air to females. Like so, so that's really cool because it just goes. This is this is how how the magic of of when I do readings is that like like something completely like 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 things get repeated in such different ways that are so similar. Okay, so Alfeca, last thing I'll talk about before we end is um conjunct a lot. Let's see if there's any information about it. I don't know anything about it. Well, I know very little. Um. So it was, it was like, yeah. So Venus, Neptune, and Mercury. So with Mercury, it says, mind more active in the body, somewhat indol indolent, benefits from friends, extravagant, but saving in small things, lost by enemies. But then, I have to re pull the thing up one sec. But then I was looking to see if you had any of these other aspects. Nope. What's this one? I also think like you could you could potentially like like 
like find love like your like uh husband or uh, i don't know like um within like your work environment like within your like your job okay so gonna go back here see how close it was so it was So it's 10 here, 10, 11, 11, 12. So the mercury, is it within 0.25? So hard to tell. Okay, this one's this one. 12.42 and 11.44. So no, they're within a degree. It's point zero six. Okay, so it's point zero six from Neptune, which won't matter as much. And then it's like Point fifty from Venus, so it's within a degree of Venus. Okay, so um, Venus says it's favorable for love affairs, benefits from friends, artistic and musical taste and talent. And then with Neptune, ooh, there's a lot. I'm surprised. And this was very close. Aggressive, abrupt. Ooh, this is not good. Disagreeable, unfavorable for money matters that gain through marriage. Uh, domestic. Disharmony and, and remember these are like old like a lot of these are like old like um thing like ones and there's like two of them so like I think the second one will be will make a lot more sense um and peculiar features in connection with with marriage domestic disharmony and peculiar features in connection with marriage not very favorable for children gained through martial occupations. Uh, may invent something of value in surgery or chemistry, writes on occult subjects, many changes, uh, much travels by water or in early life, many enemies, liable to heart elements, thunder, violent death, which it literally says thunder, violent death, in, like all of these. So don't take that. Um, and then it says these days are, this is like a different definition. Are, oh, are, and this is one that I, I already know is, is better. These days are, are an open channel to the spiritual plane continuously. And if they're able to control it or use it incorrectly, they can find themselves confined in, to an institution. Damn. If these people use drugs or heavy medications, insanity can be the result. This is the absolute... Damn, holy fuck. And it's 0 .0, 0 0 0.06 away. Absolute highest spiritual vessel, and it is totally spiritual. It can be used in negative or selfish ways as, a, as they feel the spiritual power and use it for selfish reasons for the most part. Use it in a positive way. They can simply walk around a group of people and tell each and every one exactly what they wish to know. They are extraordinary psychics, which I saw earlier. So give props to me for that. I'm just joking. But anyways, that is it. Hope you enjoyed. Amazing time. Great reading. And I look forward to uh, speaking to you. Uh, I think you said you want to get the current astrology reading. I'll give you a big discount for that. Um, I think Sam said she would, Samantha or Sam, um, said she would put us in contact through WhatsApp. If not, my email is jesseinnocentro at gmail.com. And uh, we can like find <clears throat> a day and time, but it's it's important to, you know, have watched enough times, but also like it's important to to book like early because I'm I'm a busy guy. My my wait list is like now I'm moving to like the between sixty and seventy people. It's all new. This whole thing is like six months old of me like actually being like successful at this. So cool. Well thank you so much and um appreciate you and hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you later. I really blew you kiss. I'll see you anyways. Okay.